I want to hear from the owner in Mark Davis. That's who I want to hear from. I want, I want Mark Davis to tell me how he feels about the situation that just happened with his former head coach. That, that's what I want him to tell us. I don't want him to tell us that he's not talking about it right now and go and, and speak to the NFL if you want to find out. If I don't want to hear that. I want to hear him. It's his team. The gen it's not the general manager's team. It's Mark Davis's team who is the owner. But this is why you have a lot of dysfunctional organizations because you have people who are handed things that act like they don't know how to run it a certain way. So that's that's what I got to say about the situation. Mark Davis, I think that the unwillingness to publicly address this situation is inexcusable. I frankly think it's cowardly. Uh, optically, it seems like his hand was forced that he had to fire John Gruden, which I think sets a really poor example for the players and other executives on the Raiders organization. The fact that Mike Mayock, that Josh Jacobs, that Derek Carr, that Darren Waller have to address the media and try to dance around these issues, uh, not knowing their owner stance on the issue, I think puts him in a very precarious situation. Four years removed, John Gruden has put his stamp and his personality on the team so that people will answer to him in how he wanted to dictate things. So when you have players that are on their first contract or players that are respectful or graceful or, or, or appreciated of, of, of the fact that you have given them a second opportunity like a Darren Waller, they won't step out there and be forceful in their real opinions because they don't know the backlash that they may get in the organization at the time. Now that Rich Basaccia is taking over, it's going to be a totally different situation because Rich is true to his core values. He, I, I haven't even been in the Raiders locker room, and I can tell you to a man, they love him, and I haven't even been there, that they love him, completely love him, and will do whatever he asks because that's who he is. So the makeup of the team is going to shift, and you will see players step up and start to say things that other players when group was there wouldn't say because it's okay now. Why wasn't Passaccia, if he's the best leader of men that the GM has ever seen, already head coach? I, 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 so I'm asking that, but I, uh, I chuckled because he says, you know, we're three and two, we're going to let the season play out, and we'll deal with it at the end of the season. I'm like <laughs> saying to myself, you might not be there at the end of the season because Gruden brought you in. And the fact that Gruden brought him in, a new head coach, if it's not Basachi, and if it is Basachi, it won't be because Mike Mayock hired him, it'll be because Mike, Mark Davis hired him. So therefore, Rich may not want to work with Mike Mayock moving forward. That's why I laugh. But to answer your question, Max, because John Gruden brought in Rich Versace. He he brought him in. He was our special teams coach in Tampa. He's special team coach in Dallas when Rob Marinelli was down there as a defensive coordinator. They all kind of, you know, Coach Marinelli's another guy who is a great individual who's a defensive line coach from the Raiders. So one thing Mayock is right about, as I said before, it won't be any issues on the coaching staff because the one thing that's gone, the, the, the as they like to call it, the rotten apple, that rotten apple's gone. It's in the trash can. It's gone. There's a whole new batch that's growing. And that that is Rich Basaccia. That is Greg Olson. That is Rob Marinelli. That is those guys that are there on that team coaching those players now. They understand. Groom's out of the locker room. He, they don't have to worry about that anymore. What they got to do now as a team is rally together in the locker room behind Coach Basaccia and get things done the way that they know how. And this may be a blessing for many players. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by this is, as you know, Jay, there are guys that may have not gotten the opportunity to perform at the highest level for the Raiders because of the biased opinion about the head coach, about what type of player that individual 
is. And so now that the head coach is no longer there, the, the position coach now who liked that player that was advocating that particular player can now go and say, hey, I like him at this position because he does a better job than this individual on this down and distance on this particular play. And that's the kind of behind-the-scenes stuff that people don't really understand. Mark this down, Jay and Max. There will be a handful of players that will emerge for the Raiders as not necessarily super superstars, but where the hell were they at for five games? Or where the hell was this guy at? You watch what I tell you. It always happens that way because the new coach says, I've always liked this guy, but the old head coach would never give this guy an opportunity. Now I'm in charge. I'm going to elevate this person. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.